Just a quick review on the Coolertron China Multimedia uh, head unit for our 2002 and up Jeep Liberties and other similar Grand Cherokees, TJs, etc. when they switch to the round corner units. Uh, it works real well, you know, volume is uh, adjustable in two different manners. You can actually adjust the base volume to a point where it goes off of a certain volume and then adjust the actual manual volume here. Um, but you've got touchscreen uh, settings for your presets. If you want to go to the home menu, you've got Bluetooth. You can read off the disc, go back to FM uh, radio or AM radio, whichever you want, and navigate. You can go through and adjust the theme and logo, those, though those don't seem to be adjustable or function. And you can actually go in and adjust your key setup. This is for specifically your steering wheel controls. You do have to manually splice your steering wheel controls in, um, which is the red and red wire with blue tracer coming off of the second pin in on the white connector going to the clock spring on the steering column. But you can go through and set everything. Mine is all set, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can adjust your audio to balance out front, rear, left, right, as well as adjust volume and treble uh, and bass. Uh, you can go through and turn off the brake control. Uh, you can turn on radar, turn off the beeps, which I hate. Set it to 24 hour military standard time. Uh, adjust it from Celsius and Fahrenheit. And uh, you want to keep the nav, adjust the nav uh, volume adjustable. Um, this factory just goes through the firmware uh, and updatability, which you have to plug a USB in for. You can calibrate the screen, uh, which is touch screen, but I'm using the stylus that they supply. Go over. You've got your auxiliary inputs, which I don't have anything hooked up on those, so I, it just brings me to a blue screen. SD cards, which uh, you can install. It's got room for a USB and one mini SB or SD cards. Uh, USB iPod controls, which I haven't tested out yet. But let's go here. We've got the regular buttons, not the touchscreen buttons, to go, you know, radio, which I guess that's not going to work right now. So that's just changing the band that we're on. Let's get back to FM1. But if you can hear, the sound quality is actually excellent. I've had some, uh, I've had some issues as far as a few of the local stations seeming to come in worse on this unit than they do on any other unit. But let's go to navigation. All right, navigation. You've got route options, destination, etc. Now this, uh, we go to show map. It's pretty accurate. I'm not going to show you me moving or any of that, but I haven't had any issues with it. I have had a chance to use it. We've got, uh, you can pick which one you want to have up here. This is speed right now, but you can bring it back up and you've got speed, the current speed limit on the road that you're on, and time. I am sorry about the, uh, poor quality of the video. This is off my cell phone, so. Now we're going to the disc that is in it, which is uh, the, what is it, the first of the newest generation of Star Trek movies that I've got in it right now. It takes a moment to load, but we're watching that right now. I, I love you can actually adjust what's coming in as far as audio. It's just a button push on the direction to change up and down. Now the Bluetooth menu, well first off actually let's show you backup camera. Now it's night out and I have auxiliary lights plugged into my class 3 receiver. Uh, into the seven pin uh, trailer connector so I can see now this is a 
quote unquote infrared um, camera, it works for shit at night. It's terrible. Um, I'll have to upgrade to a better quality. I also don't like the license plate mount because it's offset from center of the vehicle. Anyway, Bluetooth. It shuts out all, all audio. You can't really see the quality here, but I could connect this if I wanted to. It allows you to go through any folders for uh, music. You can manually dial from here straight through the phone, push the call button, push the answer button, many different things. It does have the ability to access your phone book. You can download it once you have uh, met or have, have synced it with your phone. Um, you can change the screen, the time display, which, yeah, it's coming in, but it's terrible. Overall, I like the unit. Um, when you are using navigation, every single button push that you enter for, the, for every letter and every number of the address, every single one of them cuts out the audio. So if you are listening to music and using the GPS, good luck. Now once it's navigating, it's fine. Um, the reason that you want the volume controllable for the nav is it's flat out annoying when it cuts off the music. Uh, once it's, act it's enabled and activated, you can actually shut off or mute the GPS only. And once you're in navigation, um, if you do have the audio on for navigation, you can go back to the radio and listen to the radio and it will just audibly tell you when to turn left and right. Now these don't have the, uh, it's uh, iGo, but it doesn't have the voice to text or text to voice uh, capabilities. You can download that for an extra fee. Overall, pretty pleased with the unit. It does work fairly flawlessly. Um, I prefer the factory radio's functionality of the steering wheel controls. There are some issues there, uh, namely that the left side controls work fine, the right center button works great, but to use the volume up or down off the old, uh, you know, what would control that with the factory radio, you have to push the center button while pushing that at the same time because they don't put out outputs that this rec or that the head unit recognizes. That could be my switches. I've got another set on the way. We'll see if that's the case, but it's doubtful. Um, there's only so much you can get with a $400 radio. It is an upgrade. I do like it. I would recommend buying it if you can get it for under 380 bucks and free shipping.